You're watching Higher Things Video Shorts with me, Pastor Chris Hall. If you're looking for an easy way to support Higher Things, remember to like, share, and subscribe. Also hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any Higher Things content. You can follow Higher Things on social media and our website over at www.higherthings.org. If you love what we're doing in Higher Things, we ask that you remember us in your donations and prayers. Welcome back to Forgiveness Friday. Today we are going to talk about a fun one, one that we all do. We probably wish we didn't do, but we do, and that is coveting. Coveting is the opposite of contentment. When we're content with something, it means we delight in what God gives us. We see those gifts of the fourth petition of the Lord's Prayer, those daily bread gifts, and we see where God has placed us in life and we take delight in them. We delight in our family, in our friends, in our school, in our job, in our body, in our demeanor, in our hair color, in our clothing, in the car we drive. Anything that's been given to us from above, meaning God is the one that gives us all we have in life, we delight in it. We say, you know what, this is what I have. This is what God has given me and I love it. But what happens to us usually is we see someone else with the, well, it's kind of like this on Christmas morning. When you open your, you know, when you're little, you open your present and you see your gift, but then you see your brother's gift or your sister's gift. And it's like, well, wait a minute. I had a fun time playing with mine, but now I want theirs because they have it. I don't have that joyful contentment in what I've been given. I want theirs as well. So we covet. We desire something that God hasn't given to us. And in that, we despise what God has has given to us. And one of the best stories of coveting in the Old Testament is the story of David and Bathsheba. Now, usually we hear this story as a story of adultery. That's the big sin. Sometimes we label David as the adulterer. The problem is that's not where it began. It began by David desiring, wanting a wife that was not given to him. Bathsheba was not David's wife. She was Uriah's wife. And David wanted her. So he did anything he could, destroyed his neighbor, literally killed Uriah so he could steal Bathsheba. And he doesn't really acknowledge this. He doesn't come to the understanding that this is wrong. He doesn't have that remorse over it. So God sends Nathan the prophet to him, and Nathan tells that lovely story, that beautiful sermon of the one man with the one little ewe lamb that he delights in and holds and feeds like his own child, and the king who has hundreds of sheep. And when the king has a guest come into town to entertain, instead of taking one of his sheep, the hundreds he has, he goes and takes the man's little ewe lamb because he sees the delight that it causes the man. He takes it. And David is furious and says, that man should be punished. And Nathan says, well, you are the man. You are the coveter. And we all are. How often do we actually delight in our neighbor getting good things? Like if you go, let's say you go play the lottery or something, and you, you do, let's say it's one of those scratch-off ones. You buy 20 of them, and you don't win anything. You've just wasted $40, and your fingers hurt now, and they have that weird stuff all over them. But the guy behind you, he buys one of them, and he wins $100,000. Do you say, thank you, Lord, that my neighbor won $100,000? No, of course not. That's silly. You want the $100,000. That's why we look at magazines, and we see someone else's body shape and go, oh, I wish I looked like that. Or you see your friend at his house or her house and say, well, I wish I lived there sometimes. I wish I was in that family. They seem so much happier. I wish I lived in that part of town. I wish I had this car. We all covet because we see our neighbor's life and think their life is better than ours. Maybe God loves them more than us, which of course isn't true. God does love you. 
And that's why he gives you the daily bread that he knows you need. He gives your neighbor the daily bread they need. And he gives you what he knows what is best for you. But we don't take delight in it. And we still covet. So is it forgiven? Well, how did the story end with David and Nathan? David repents. He says, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan absolves him. He forgives him. And you are forgiven as well for your covenant. When you've sought after those things in life that God hasn't given you. When you don't delight in your neighbor doing better than you. When you desire all this other stuff, thinking that it will bring some type of fulfillment to your life, it's forgiven. Because Christ himself has only one desire, and it's to have you. That you are his little you lamb that he feeds at his table that he takes care of, that he loves, he cherishes. You are his desire. You are what his father, his father has given you into his son's hands. And Jesus has great joyful contentment with you. He delights in nothing more than you. And he forgives you unconditionally. Your coveting, it's forgiven. Your envy, it's absolved. Your desiring other things is overcome by the desire of Jesus for you. So be at peace, my dear friends. Your coveting is forgiven in Christ. Coveting has lost. Jesus is victorious, and you are his forever. God bless you all, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.